you for having me on. And I agree with everything you just said. But I will tell you, Jen, the Mr. Beast video got yeah. Tim Pool. Tim Pool basically was advocating for Medicare for All right after that video came, Interesting, came out. Interesting, right? Yeah, I was like, what? I was watching Tim Pool. I was like, he was inching closer and closer. He didn't go all the way there, but he was heading there, though. Because I am pro uh, Medicare for All. I disagree yeah. with a lot of the, the right on that. Yeah. I mean, well, you also recognize that fiscally speaking, it's the more it's the smarter thing to do. We pay more for worse outcomes that it, it's interesting how that whole concept of being fiscally responsible is somehow not being looked at as fiscally responsible um, by the people that are supposed to be promoting fiscal responsibility. Yeah, I'm disappointed in MAGA for their stance there. They're not. But I think I think they're open to discussions, though. I think that you've got to get the Ilan Omars of the world and AOCs at the table with Marjorie Taylor Greene. I know people don't like her and Matt Gates, but oh. I think they they got to get to the table. I, whether we like them or not, yeah. they should be at the table talking. You know, it's amazing yeah. how many based, uh, and, and I always believe that there's always like some type of, uh, there's something looming in the background that forces people to have a conscience, like, a lot of the things that Matt Gates has been saying lately are making a lot of sense. And I'm thinking, OK, well, what does somebody have over him that's making him sound like some type of a populist on the left, which is just so ridiculous. But, you know, look, I mean, the interview that he had with Tim Pool regarding the the actual day to day operations yeah. in D.C., mm -hmm. I thought was extremely important. And it doesn't make the squad look good when they're basically running cover for the establishment that are subjugating the very people that they say they're trying to help. It doesn't make any sense. But for them, it becomes this sort of like career that they value more than the actual job that they're there to do. When everyone's pounding their fists when, you know, and listen, Ilhan Omar should be on the Foreign Affairs Committee. The fact that she was kicked off is total politics. But again, the reason why they're kicking her off has nothing to do with her being a Muslim woman. They'll say that that's the reason, but the truth is, is that she's got a very strong streak regarding uh, what goes on in Syria, what goes on in Israel, Palestine, and even what goes on in Ukraine. And they don't want that message. They don't want that out there. And so their whole song and dance on, you know, the house floor is to just make it about the woke culture. And that's why they kicked her off. And we're never going to get anywhere if that's what it's going to be. Yeah, we're doing this eye for an eye. I mean, they're still mad about Marjorie Taylor Greene getting kicked off. To me, it's it's as simple as you did it to somebody on our side, then we're going to do it to your side. And I, it's just an eye for an eye, man. That does not end well. It never stops because the house flips again and then they do it again. And I don't have the magical answer, but I would have liked them to talk to Ilan Omar and them and say, hey, you kicked off Marjorie Taylor Greene. We want a truce. We'll, we'll keep Ilan Omar on and we're good, right? Politics is dirty. They probably wouldn't do it, but that's what I would have liked to have seen. It's ridiculous to me when I watch stuff like this, and it is, it's very much tit for tat. And when I watch this, it reminds me of like school children where you need to be a grown up in the room. Mm -hmm. It's really absurd. It's th This is what we call egos holding our government hostage. And we see it on both sides. This isn't, a, this isn't a partisan thing. And the one thing I will say about Gates and company is while I don't generally agree with them on policy, the concept of them that they were standing up for something and holding back their vote is a populist thing to do. That is democracy. So it doesn't matter whether or not I agree with them on the issues because ultimately what they're asking for is to chance to vote on something, which like I've said, uh, that shouldn't be that hard of a fight to bring something for a vote. That should be a given. Primary example of the problem that we're facing right now, Metopoly is a conservative, one of our great supporters. We love having him here. But there is always this this misconception. And that's why it's easier to deal with the populist right than it is with the liberal middle, if you will, uh, because their whole concern is the government taking over health care, which, again, you know, right wing conservative messaging, uh, neoliberal messaging has been very effective when it comes to universal health care. This whole idea that we want the government to run health care is a complete non-starter. That's not what we're asking for. We're asking for the removal of the for-profit middlemen in between us and our doctors. Hence, the ridiculous Grammy show that was on the other night was sponsored by Pfizer. We don't need <laughs> oh Pfizer running our healthcare system, which is what they do. 
as do a lot of other major corporations. If we cut them out of the equation, our health care costs would probably be a third of what they are right now. And virtually everyone would be able to afford it. And with those that wouldn't be able to afford it, that's where the single payer system comes into effect. So for those who are saying that this isn't actually feasible, it's not true. Well, it's, it's weird extremely me, feasible. What's well, weird, and Osiris, I'm sure you know that a few years ago, it was when they were doing the estimates on how much universal single payer health care would save us, that even the conservative Koch brothers study was conservative at like, you know, two trillion dollars or two billion dollars or whatever it was. It's all ridiculous to me. But even the most conservative study showed that it actually saves us money. Yeah, that's why they don't want to talk about it. They just don't talk about it, like, at all anymore, not even AOC in them. Because if you talk about it, people might start listening and like, wait a second, why are we doing this? Especially after there's this controversy going on with the whole Jabberwocky and and that company that you mentioned. Now there's a lot of negative press there. So um, they would be furious. So I wouldn't... It, it wouldn't be easy. I would not want to face the wrath of. I don't even say that company's name anymore in videos. I don't. I don't want to face their wrath. Yeah, and and again, uh, Mario, uh, a great progressive supporter of the show, says that it would have been great if AOC uh, heard out um, the fraudulent senator from Texas. But you know, even <laughs> if Flip. even if everything that comes out of Senator Cruz's mouth is BS, which it pretty much is. Yeah, but a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> if you're AOC, why don't you call him on it and say, yeah, I agree. Let's do it right now. And then see how serious he really is. That is, that's why I, I don't under, how is it that we can see this? Well, and here's the only thing I would say is that because we're, we're not in there and she's in there, it is also possible that she knows that he is completely full of crap based on whatever information and knows that he's just doing it as some sort of like theatrical posturing. Thing. I have no doubt that he is full of well, crap. That's what I'm saying. Well, I don't, I, I'm just but saying. But then why not present it that way and say, okay, we agree on this. Right, call them on it. Let's that. let's let's have let's have an amendment on the floor right now. Let's see you do it in the Senate. We'll do it in the House, and let's get a vote for it, and we'll see who actually believes in this and who doesn't. Believe who thinks it. Ted Cruz would do that? But no, that's the whole point of AOC calling him out. Yeah. That's what you're yeah. supposed to do. No, I know. Instead but of she's not doing that. Instead of telling him to go to hell, it's like you're not you're not doing anything to further the message. You're actually hurting it because there is this idea that. You know, the left and especially liberals are just, you know, whiny babies. And it's all about I'm I believe I am morally superior to you. So I don't actually have to engage with you is not good politics. It's actually really bad politics. So thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media and consider joining our Patreon where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.